Surprisingly, to glide as far as possible, a pilot doesn't want to fly as fast as possible. The faster a plane flies, the more the airflow pushes against it, creating resistance. Every plane has an optimal speed to achieve the furthest glide. The crew continued flying up to 55 miles an hour faster than their optimal gliding speed. That added to the drag on the plane and reduced the distance they could glide. By feathering his props and reducing his speed, a simulator pilot in France was able to get the plane as far as Palermo. You're with me, Ellie, huh? Careful. Flight 1153 hit the water 26 miles from shore, well short of what the plane was capable of achieving. The simulation confirmed that the crew might have been able to make it to land. It was uh, theoretically possible to reach the coast, but it was also very difficult to achieve that result. Simulator pilots had one big advantage over the crew of Flight 1153. They weren't in a life or death situation, and they knew they had to glide instead. Fuel supply, check. But Captain Garbi didn't know he was out of fuel. He didn't think he'd need to glide to Palermo. Garbi focused on restarting the engines instead. Feathering the props isn't part of that procedure. If the captain had known he was out of fuel, he might have acted to maximize glide instead. Once he realized that his engines wouldn't start, his focus was on trying to find a place to ditch the plane. Captain Garbi also had to contend with a lack of instruments, as well as radio interruptions. What is your fuel load? Cockpit fuel quantity, 1,800 kilograms. Most importantly, Captain Garbi had the lives of his 34 passengers to consider. Of course, it's much uh, easier to cope with that kind of situation on the simulator. Because if you do wrong, if you crash the aircraft, you have the magic button, right, reset, everything is okay again. And uh, that's very different in the real life with uh, passengers behind and when it's your life.